Each of us, to one or another degree, has been described as a gateway drug to the alt-right. <laughs> we, we've been attacked by, by people left of center as somehow inspiring or pandering to right of center, and in many cases, far right of center ideas and, and, and uh, ethical and pseudo-ethical commitments. Uh, I'm wondering, yes, I'm wondering, I'm wondering if we can steel man the concerns that people have with us for a few minutes before uh, addressing them. What, how, how, do you, how do you view this, this reaction to, to your work? And well, I'm happy to do that first. Yeah. Can I just say before I do, I was going to say it if we were going to go to audience Q&A, I understand, I was reminded today that there's still a blasphemy law in Ireland. Ah, well. Am I right on that? I, I, I await the police. I'm right, aren't I? Yeah. In which case, can I just say that I'm not going to be happy if we leave the stage tonight. <laughs> In you handcuffs? and I have not both committed blasphemy. <laughs> right, yes, yeah. uh, okay. And if Jordan would like to join in. <laughs> I prefer that to do that in private. We could make yeah. it a full house. <laughs> um, I really do think we should be blasphemous. I, I think I must have done that already, but I've, I'll have to go to the tape on that. Um, so, well, here's the thing. We've all had similar-ish experiences on that, and there are a number of people among our friends and uh, colleagues, perhaps you might say, who've had it as well. Um, and I think what's happening at the moment is that there's a set of tripwires that have been put across the culture. And... For a long time, if you went across these tripwires, you died, reputationally speaking. Because of the nature of the media, new media, among other things, that sudden death isn't possible anymore. Or at least it's not always possible. Right. So for instance, if the New York Times says that Jordan is a uh, you know, sort of leading member of the Ku Klux Klan, it's not just that people don't believe the New York Times anymore, it's that they can go and find out for themselves that this is a lie. And that's a fundamental difference, and it means that people are surviving the tripwire experience. But there's a whole set of these tripwires, and I think they've been, they've been planted very strangely, among other things. I mean, the one I tripped on was the Islam one. I think to an extent it was the one you tripped on. Jordan, it was more to do with trans and pronouns was the first one. The great the great thing about this, by the way, is that once you survive the first tripwire, you know, in my case, I sort of merrily jump along in no man's land, landing on IED after right. IED. Right. And strangely, I'm still here. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but you said I should steal man it. Here's what yeah. I think is probably happening. There is a fear that in this realm of uncertain values, which we might concede at any rate that we're in, uh, there is only one thing we all agree on. The one thing we all agree on is we mustn't become Nazis. Okay? <laughs> Broadly speaking, that's the basis of our ethics. It's the only bit of history anyone knows, <laughs> and they don't even know it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they think they're all over the Hitler thing. Right. Haven't got a clue. Most right. of them. All they know is Hitler's a bad person. This is why, by the way, anyone anyone doesn't like in politics is Hitler. It's like George W. Bush, Hitler. Ah, if you had any sense of historical reference, you might say Henry V, mm -hmm. domineering father whose shadow he had to step out of, for instance. But uh, Henry V, Smith, uh, who knows about that? So it's, everything's Hitler. So if we agree that the one thing we're all meant to do is not become Nazis, you build these incredibly deep, big trenches around anything you think could be, as it were, something that would lead us back to that. The problem is, is that people who have done that trench building include people who are doing it for their own personal political gain. So they build a set of trenches around their political views, and they say, if you come near this, then you've trodden into the, that trench and you're a Nazi. Some of it is for short-term convenience, and I have no doubt that some of it is sincere. But the amount of, the amount of lying about it makes me doubt that last bit. And right. let me add one other thing to that. 
one of the books I recommend people read most to do with politics is a brilliant book by Paul Berman, who I think yeah. you know as well, yeah. called Power and the Idealists. It has, by the way, the worst subtitle of any book. It's called Power and the Idealists, The Strange Passion of Joska Fischer. <laughs> now, distinguished left-wing German politician though he is, uh, it's not, it, does, it doesn't leap off the shelf. Yeah. Anyhow, The Strange Passion of Joska Fischer is an amazing book which I wish was taught in schools because he describes in this book how this group of Germans who grew up in the 1950s had one aim. The one aim was, we're not going to become like our parents. Okay. It's, they think it's enough to orient their politics around. Yeah, yeah. What happens? Uh, the green movement melds with a part of the German left. A whole set of things happen. They end up agreeing with the PLO and the hijackings in the late 60s and early 70s. And before you know it, one of Joska Fischer's housemates is on the plane as it's on the tarmac, and he's separating out the Jews and the non-Jews. Think, we've done it again. Yeah. The one thing we were meant not to become was the people standing on the ramp saying, oh, right left, that yeah. way, that way, yeah. and we did it. it. We went all the way around. So there's something about this that I just wish was better known. But it's not as damn easy as all that. Like, your enemies don't come with jackboots and swastikas like this. No. It's, it's just not that easy. No, they live inside you. Right. That's really the case. So, let me try the steel man approach. Yep. Okay, so, so, the first thing that people assume about me is that I'm no fan of the radical left. And that's absolutely, and that's absolutely true. I am no fan of the radical left. And that's primarily because, there's a variety of reasons, but it's primarily because I believe that the radical left errs in insisting at every possible opportunity that the proper defining characteristic of each individual is their group membership. I think that that's you, and you do have a group membership, in fact, you have a whole plethora of them, which makes things quite complicated, as the intersectionalists have already figured out. Um, but whenever my, someone brings a primary orientation to the world that is group-centered rather than individual-centered, I think they've already made a catastrophic mistake. And so I don't approve of the collectivists. Now, I don't approve of left-wing collectivists, and I don't approve of right-wing collectivists, but the right-wing collectivists haven't overrun the universities, and the left-wing collectivists have. So, so that's a distinct difference. Now, the, the left-wing collectivists um, enjoy acquiring a certain linguistic hegemony because they know that that's part of the way they can win the battle, and that's what they were trying to do when they passed compelled speech legislation in Canada, as far as I was concerned. So I made a video saying, I'm not going to abide by that because I'm not using the reprehensible linguistic maneuvers of collectivists who I detest. So, now, when I did that, you see, it was a very strange thing for a Canadian to do because Canadians don't do that, partly because Canada works just fine. And so nobody comes up and says, waves the flag saying, look, we're, we're wandering off a dangerous cliff here. And so then if someone does stand up and say that, then the first thing that all the other Canadians think and should think is that there's something wrong with that person. And that would be me. So then the question would be, well, what variety of things could be wrong with Dr. Peterson? That's a very long list, but the ones that might that, come... That's actually a better subtitle than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Terrific yeah. title. Yeah. So, so, so what happened was, I objected to the radical left, that was my perspective, but the people who objected to me or who were even critical of me or curious about me thought, okay, well, if Peterson isn't part of the left, then where the hell is he? And the answer could be, well, anywhere on the political spectrum, including Nazi. And of course, that's hypothetically true. And if I was a Nazi, then that would be really useful for all the radical leftists because if you're a Nazi, as Douglas has already pointed out, we've already decided that you're a bad person. And if I was a bad person, then no one would have to listen to me. And so it was in the interests of the radicals who I was dis whose positions I was disputing to cast me as a Nazi. 
But it was also a reasonable cognitive maneuver because there was some possibility, although it's infinitesimal given the tiny proportion of actual Nazis in our society, that I would in fact be one and have gotten away with hiding that at two major universities for 25 years. And also, also, at that point, I had 250 hours of my lectures on YouTube, which was basically every word, in essence, that I ever uttered to a student since 1993, and a huge part of that actually consisted of very trenchant criticisms of Nazis. So it was difficult to pin that on me. So, 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 but to give my critics credit, they had their reason for vilifying me. And the reason was, if you object, you might be a villain. Okay, so, so that's, that's steel man number one. I'm not at least the kind of villain they think I am, although I might be some other kind of villain altogether. So then the next steel man issue is, the left has a place. Okay, so why? Well, here's why. In order to act properly in the world, you have to do things. Everyone agrees on that, and to do things, you have to do them in the social world. You have to cooperate and compete with other people. And when you cooperate and compete with other people in the service of valid goals, valuable goals, productive goals, you produce hierarchies. You produce hierarchies of competence and hierarchies of power. Those aren't exactly the same thing. But it, either way, you produce hierarchies, and hierarchies dispossess people. They dispossess people because the spoils go to a few, that's the problem of the unequal distribution of wealth, and because in any hierarchy of competence, a disproportionate number of, a small number of people do most of the creative work. And these are ironclad laws. Okay, so the problem with hier hierarchies are necessary, but the problem with hierarchies is they produce dispossession. And the left, in principle, speaks for the dispossessed and someone has to speak for the dispossessed. And so when the lefties look at me and they say, well, Dr. Peterson is always speaking about the necessity of hierarchies, and how can we be sure that he's not trying to justify them in their current position and obscure the fact that they tend towards tyranny and deception, which they clearly do, how do we know that he's just not reifying the present power structure for his own aims, and why should we trust him? And that's a perfectly valid objection. Now, it, I believe it happens to be wrong because I understand the downside of hierarchies and, and I also think I understand how to go about rectifying that. But that's why they're objecting insofar as they don't, as, insofar as they're playing a straight political game right. and not if some ideological form of grandio grandiose behavior. And the, so there's one other thing in this which is worth mentioning, which is the perception is that the, the, the as it were, aside from, let's say that this is the center of the political axis and uh, I'm gonna have to do this for you, but. Okay, that's the right. The presumption is that the, the, it's just a cliff. Like, if you start by saying, I don't know, I think people should pay smaller taxes or whatever, like, you're there. And you've just gone like that, and then it's Nazism. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, 